What's going on everybody? 915 Mang here doing a video today. We're going to talk about quite a bit of uh, stuff. I want to do a Aptasia Neuterbrank Bergia update. Some people have been asking about that and um, with my video, I want to show you guys the real problems that everybody has. Um, you know, some people just don't admit it. They'll just show you the good stuff. Everything looks good under blues. So I'm going to show you my tank, how it looks right now with the uh, daylight fun and if you find this video helpful go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe one cool thing about this one with the uh, video is you can see that thing floating in the web is a bergia now those bergias are very effective at eating aptasia aptasia are those ugly things in my tank they're pest anemones and the reason I call them pest anemones is because they sting coral they multiply so easily they take over your tank and that little thing floating in the web is a bergia and that's all they eat are those pests and enemies so when i started off with this tank um i ordered some bergias online and i didn't get a whole lot i just bought a few because they're so expensive but those expensive ones that i bought now have been laying eggs and have been hatching uh giving birth to these little babies all over the place and I've been seeing them you know in the nighttime mainly but now I'm starting to see them in the daytime I've, I found them behind you know my magnets uh, you'll see them come out of the rocks and uh, right now you can see it got entangled in this web but I'm gonna rescue it I'm gonna break this uh, free from the web that's like I guess he's gonna eat it right now but not today buddy not today but I do gotta say it is really cool when they give birth because each one online can run you up to $25 each and that's a really tiny size it's not any bigger than the one that I got here maybe a little bit bigger but you know they're $25 each for one of these um, Bergia slugs and they're well worth it now it is taking a long time for them to you know start making a difference but I was looking at my tank the other day and me and the wife were talking like hey i think these aptasia are starting to disappear because i had them really really heavy on the rocks really heavy on the rocks and i still have them really heavy in the sand bed but these guys are what they'll do is they'll come out at night and they'll start destroying the whatever's on the rock whatever's deep in the rock they're gonna hit first and then after that then they'll start working their way on the sand bed and now i'm finally finally noticing a difference in my sand bed. It's not to say that I don't want to add any um, other fish or anything like that because I do. I want to add a, like a copper band but I just haven't had a chance yet. I did think about doing the peppermints but uh, you know just bergias are for sure a for sure thing and you can see this is a different bergia slug and the it's the size of a super glue and I've been finding quite a bit of these guys in my tank and it's really awesome to see. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up for you because here's one and then here's the second one coming out of the rocks and that's what I'm talking about. They come out of the rocks, you will not see them, you'll, you'll find them like hidden under your magnets and stuff like that but they're going to work eating everything at the rock and I want to show you one more uh, clip of my Bergia actually going towards some Aptasia. Now that on your left is Aptasia. It's on the top. It's ugly. And uh, I was using the Mohana one. And for some reason I think that thing just made them aggravated and started and they started releasing eggs and spores all over the place. Um, because when you zap them you're supposed to pull them out. But it's kind of hard to do that because um, they'll shrink up on you. And there it is going to work and I hope he eats them all because um, once he's done eating that my tank will be nice and clear guys all right so that's enough of that I wanted to talk, show you guys what else I got I got some poly filter this stuff is awesome uh, you don't have to buy a whole that big pad you can just buy the little ones and then when it's done you can go ahead and dispose of them but I got quite a few because I leave them in my tank for a while and uh, I picked this order up online from Marine Depot, which if you don't know, 
use that code 915 manga at checkout and you'll save 10 percent and uh it helps me out as well but uh let me show you what i got uh, i had some problems with my uh bleaching of my sps and i had bleaching of my sps because i have wasn't monitoring my alkalinity and i ended up picking up a great product you know i do have the test kits where you drop do the few drops of this you mix the reagent then you look at the the color and whatever the color is how many depending on how many drops you put in the uh test thing uh that will be your alkalinity so i've used api i use the good stuff nios i use um all kinds of different the red sea coral pro uh color test i use all that stuff but i really wanted to try the handheld because i don't want to guess uh, the numbers just read out and uh this is i'm really excited to use that in addition to the uh tester i picked up some uh, b ionic so i can dose my tank and uh i want to go ahead and show you what i did and let's talk about this test kit real quick so right off the bat i'll tell you it is pretty easy to use um my dkh or my alkalinity was seven even 7.0 um the five gallon water changes you know of course not really doing too much as far as increasing uh the parameters okay so it's 7.0 now i have been using calc washer with calc washer i gotta tell you it's great at maintaining your levels but it will not raise your alkalinity or anything like that uh, it has a lot of good benefits for that you know it keeps phosphates down um, if you want coralline algae and things like that it'll help help out um, but calc washer will not raise your alkaline alkalinity at all and uh, that's why i went ahead and i got the bionic two-part um, so i can manually dose once i get stuff dialed in and figure out everything like my numbers how much my tank is consuming then i'll go ahead and set up my doser again i have a wi-fi doser so this test kit is awesome it does i love it um i don't have to multiply anything it gives me a simple readout once i'm done um but now for the bad part of the test kit because i'm going to tell you guys straight up it's not a big deal but it doesn't come with one of these you can get these uh, online you know they'll charge you but just go to walgreens just go to cvs when you get a prescription or whatever and get the 10 ml because that's how much each vial uses like this i had it laying around got it at walgreens for free and uh it makes a makes life easier because you know this thing takes 10 ml so that's the only uh bad thing in my opinion and other than that i like it because this thing does work pretty well so right off the bat i got the 7.0 alkalinity alkalinity and what i was dosing is 15 ml of the uh, bionic um, which i was under dosing because i didn't want to raise my alkalinity fast very at all you know i did it 15 ml a day and eventually i got up to uh eight point eight point something and uh i was just doing the 15 ml of bionic every day um did i notice anything on my corals um not really but i started talking to other reefers i talked to uh mr budman and he was telling me he keeps his at eight something i was talking to west coast reefer he was telling me he keeps his around eight something and uh you know those guys are sps masters i'm still a zoa guy i'm still going to be doing my water changes you know but uh this hannah checker if you guys don't have it it's pretty awesome the new ones you can get make sure you get them that they say marine on them and uh it's awesome because it has a re reagent that you just squirt into your the vial i don't have to be playing around with powder or anything like that but uh it's pretty good so let me know if you guys have it how you test and uh if you like doing it you're gonna do it often if you don't like doing it you know like me you're not gonna do it very often 
Now this is the uh, pad that I was talking about. It does change color. It removes all kinds of terrible things in your water. You know, if you're gonna do the water test, you can do that. But this thing, you just throw it in your sump. You know, it says to throw it in a reactor, but this is how I do it. it it'll change colors and it'll keep cleaning uh, your tank. Now a little bit of bad news. My tank fish are starting to die off. You know, I lost my wrasse. I lost this guy, which is a very nice fish that I picked up at Petco a long time ago. It was one of the survivors. Um, I had a tank disaster where I killed all my fish on accident. And uh, this guy jumped out of my tank because I don't have a lid on. And uh, my son was actually going to throw it at his brother. He's the one that let me know, hey, dad, your fish jumped out of the tank. And unfortunately, you know, there he is. Now I want to show you some more. Neuterbrank Burgess, my tank, this is a 150 gallon uh, reef tank and I also have a uh, 24, 25 gallon Innovative Marine Lagoon and uh, in this tank it is RAS free. Um, I would not recommend that you add these guys if you have a RAS. Uh, that's why I waited so long because my RAS ended up dying and as soon as he died then I started ordering uh, Burgess and putting them into my tank but I went to the LFS I went to uh, the coral reef here in El Paso and uh, Alan is no longer there but his brother is his brothers are and I picked up uh, two peppermint shrimp because you guys have been saying uh, you know you guys get it you gotta get peppermint shrimp and to be honest with you I haven't been going to the LFS lately so I picked up the two peppermint shrimp that they had and I picked up a six line Ras. Now, I don't recommend the six line ras to be introduced into your reef tank uh, because they're such butt heads. But I gotta tell you that the six line has been doing pretty well because he's the only fish in my 25 gallon lagoon. Um, and I'll show you, give you guys an update on that later on. But as you can see, I wanted to show you um, the peppermint shrimp right here at the bottom. As you can see, this is a real time update. The are the Aptasia is all over the place, but hopefully these guys can go ahead and start eating them uh, along with the burger. The burger for sure, they're gonna work and they're gonna look, it's gonna look good. Now, I do have a little bit of uh, cyano. I was thinking about doing a chemi clean, but uh, I definitely have some flow I need some more flow in this tank but we'll talk about that later on um, I have just thought about taking these whole frag racks out and letting the burgers or letting the burgers eat them or whatever but I'm just gonna leave them alone for now and uh, it's a process you know good things happen really slow in a reef tank you know and we want things to happen really fast because that's how society is now we want it now but you can't rush a reef tank at all. You know, you can crash a reef tank really fast when you start doing things bad. Like if I started dosing the maximum dose uh, that Bionic recommended, you know, maybe things wouldn't happen, but I don't want to shock my system. That's why I only did 15 mLs a day. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out. Uh, this is some scenes from last Super Bowl Sunday we did some ribs and uh, did them on the smoker just like everything in a reef tank you got to do it slow and low if, and if you do that and you take your time your ribs are going to come out good whatever you cook ribs brisket and reef tanks click that like button hit that subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one